Today I'm really excited to be sharing with you eight different things that are just really small habits that I've implemented that have made a very big difference in having a successful but also very fruitful Bible time. These are things that I've kind of worked out over the past year or so. So I'm really excited to share these things. And I also want to say that while this is my ideal Bible time and these are some things that have been really helpful, in all reality, this successful of Bible time probably only happens maybe 75% of the time. The rest of the time, maybe I oversleep my alarm clock. I wake up later than I expected, so the kids join me. Um, and so I kind of just rush through and read my Bible and have to get on with the day. But that is not my goal. That is not my ideal. So I'm excited to share what my ideal is and some habits that I use to kind of develop those things. So the first thing that I want to talk about is identifying your pain points. And what a pain point is, is it's basically just something that consistently causes friction with you achieving a certain goal. And so for myself, all the things that I'm going to be sharing are ways that I've tried to eliminate those pain points from my life so that I can more easily have a successful Bible time a lot more frequently. So with that being said, I want to get started with tip number one, and this tip came from a lady that I talk about quite often, and that is Elizabeth Elliot. I find her work very, very helpful and enjoyable. And she shared about how her father would actually wake up at four o'clock every single morning to do his Bible and to pray for an hour or two before the kids got up. And when people would ask him how he was able to achieve this, his number one thing he would always say is that he prepared the night before. So I've really tried to implement this. For myself, it involves usually trying to have the house picked up so when I come downstairs I'm not immediately bombarded with tons of work. Having the coffee pot set and the next thing that I'm kind of trying to do is setting out my clothes more consistently. I do not do this every single night before bed, but I have found it really helpful when I do to just be able to grab my clothes and go and eliminate one more decision, one more pain point that causes friction with me being motivated to get up early before the kids. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, and this really goes along with the preparation the night before, is that I keep everything I need to have a successful Bible time in this little basket. And so it's so handy because we live in a very, very small house and there's really no specific spot. My husband and I can keep all of our stuff that's like designated to our Bible time. And so it's easy for things to get lost and to get misplaced. So I know with this basket I can grab it and I have everything I need and I can take it wherever I need to go throughout the house that's quiet and away from the kids where I can really focus. The only thing that is usually missing out of this basket is a pen, which I usually find in a couch cushion. So I find that so helpful. If not waking up in the morning and realizing, oh great, I don't know where my journal is, and I misplaced my Bible yesterday, and you know the book that I was reading is gone. And so you kind of quickly get out of a habit that you've developed really well of doing a consistent pattern of things every morning. So that's really helpful. That's tip number two. Tip number three, and this is a personal thing, but I found it really helpful, is to try to train our toddler to stay in bed until 7.30 or 8 in the morning. So that way I know that if I get up before 7.30, I'm guaranteed to have time without her in the morning to do my Bible. So I aim to get up around 6 to 6.30. I do right now have a seven-month-old daughter that still enjoys joining me, and I haven't been able to totally train her out of that yet, but that is eventually my goal to have her stay in bed until then as well. I find that very, very helpful. If for some reason though, I do wake up later, which does happen sometimes, I have trained my toddler to sit still and to just look at books or be somewhat quiet so I can still try and focus and get a little bit of quality Bible time in. A friend of mine had one of these really cool clocks that would light up a different color at 7.30 or whatever time it was that she set. And that way if our kids were awake, they could see the color of the clock and get out of bed and get up. But if they were still sleeping, the light of the clock did not wake them up. And so you were able to get in a bit more time. So I might eventually get one of those because I thought it was really helpful. So that is tip number three. I'll try and keep my tips right because I don't actually have these written down. That's tip number three. Okay, tip number four, and I found this so helpful, is to eliminate distractions. This has been the biggest thing that has caused my Bible time to be just transformed over the past couple months. So I shared in February, I believe it was, that I got rid of my um, social media accounts. That was so helpful, and I did not realize how much that was a hindrance to me with having a really good 
Bible time. It's crazy how much a phone can be a distraction and how much you realize you're addicted to those little dopamine rushes of scrolling your phone when you don't even have a goal in mind as far as what you're doing. It's definitely been the number one thing that has really transformed over the past couple of months and caused so many more things to stand out and not to feel like I'm in a rush in the morning or like my brain is somewhere else. It's just been really helpful with retraining my brain. So that's the next tip. Get rid of those distractions. It's so worth it. Whatever those distractions are for you. Okay, tip number five is to read out loud. I found this really helpful. I do not do this all the time, but even if I'm not reading it, you know, where actually actual sound is coming out by just shaping the words as they're coming out of my mouth by whispering them, I find it keeps my brain much more engaged. Now, the next tip, and this is the one that I'm super excited to share with you guys, is to prayer journal. I started this last May. I've gotten very consistent at it. And I've found that by starting out the day by writing a very intentional prayer, it is transforming. It's so good. There's two things that I love about prayer journaling in particular. Number one is that if you are like me and you have to retrain your brain to not let it wander so much, it is so helpful to write your prayers down. It really helps with not getting distracted thinking about other things. The other thing about it that is awesome is the fact that you now have documented a year's worth of prayers and answers to them that you're able to go back and read, that you're able to keep track of. I know for myself, something kind of random will happen and I'll be like, did I pray for that? Like that was not normal or that was kind of an unusual thing. And now I can look back and see, and that's really cool. The next tip that I found really helpful came from this old guy that shared on a radio station once and I thought it was so sweet. He shared that when his wife had died, he was able to give each of their like 52 grandchildren or something a copy of the exact day of the month she prayed for them because she had it all written out and scheduled on which day she prayed for which person. So I started printing people on a list that I want to pray for really consistently where I know on Monday I pray for this sibling, on mo Monday I pray for this thing for my husband and having every day of the week have some different things on it that I'm praying for and I can go back to this because I keep it in my prayer journal and look at it before I start praying every morning and see oh today this is who I'm praying for and it just helps so much with praying more consistently for people about specific things or if you tell people I'm gonna pray for you and then you don't it's a good reminder to have it written down so I found that really helpful next thing that I wanted to share, I think this is my last point, um, <laughs> is that if I get up early enough and I'm able to have a successful Bible time, I'm able to prayer journal, I'm able to take notes of what I'm learning, and I still have time before the kids get up, I love reading a good Christian challenging spiritual book. Some different people I really enjoy reading and have found just very challenging to me. Johnny Erickson Tata is fabulous if you're going through struggles or hardships in your life, if you're facing a lot of suffering. Corey Ten Boom is always very, very inspiring. Amy Carmichael is someone that I found to really be motivating. Um, right now I'm reading Dietrich Bonhoeffer, The Cost of Discipleship. I'm um, reading different theological books, just books that remind me that there are Christians that have gone through so much and have been so strong and have so much faith and I found that really encouraging. George Mueller is another one that I read that was really enjoyable. So those are my tips for you guys. I hope you found them hopeful. Please share down below if you have small simple habits that you've implemented that you found to be really beneficial with having a successful Bible time, especially with little kids, especially as a mom trying to figure out how to get that quiet time, that quality time. Um, with God away from your kids. So please share those things. I would love to know them and I'm sure other mothers would as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. Also, I wanted to mention real quick, um, I thought I had deleted my Instagram. I got an email the other day saying like, these are your new followers. Um, so if you have messaged me on there, I'm sorry that I haven't replied. I thought it was permanently deleted and I'm not sure what that email was even about. And so if you followed me on there or you're trying to get a hold of me on there, you won't be able to because I don't use it anymore and I thought it was deleted. So anyway, love you guys. Just wanted to let you guys know that and I'll see you hopefully pretty soon in another video. So bye guys.